So this is upper cue number seven, and if you want to check out the problem now, you can find the link to it in the description. Um, so if you want to try this first before you see any answers, uh, you're welcome to pause now and then come back. Uh, this problem is going to go through a weak base kind of situation, uh, a little bit of strong base mixed in. Um, so kind of an unusual mix, and, and I like that about this problem. It kind of brings up some good questions. Um, A1 and 3 are a little contradictory, just, just to kind of forewarn, um, at least in my interpretation. Uh, so this has a, a sodium hydroxide ammonia solution mixed together, and this one has a sodium hydroxide solution. Everything in here is 0.01 molar, okay? So it's not 0.01 molar being mixed, it's, it's after the mixture has occurred, everything is 0.01 molar. And A part 1 says, which of the pHs would be greater or less than, or would they both be the same? Um, and, and specifically it's asking about A, uh, where you have a hydroxide concentration of 0.01 molar, and then you have some base in addition to that. So in terms of ice charting, what we have here is we have the water being ignored, 0.01 molar ammonia. But instead of having, I'm sorry, I don't want, I don't want to squiggle there, that's aqueous. Uh, instead of having 0 to start, or 10 to the minus 7th to start of this, I'm going to have a significant concentration of it. So it's a little bit of a common ion effect here. Okay, so then how does that come into play? And, and the answer kind of starts with this. What's the Q value on this? So, so having zero of this particular product sets your Q to zero no matter what the other things are. And so in order to get this reaction to an equilibrium, I'm going to have to shift to make more product. K is very small. It's 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. But it's still bigger than zero. And so because of that, I'm going to end up increasing my amounts of this by a little bit, and this, and decreasing this by a little bit. Now when I calculate, I'm going to ignore that little bit here and there, but it's still increasing. Okay, so when I do my calculation, I'm going to plug in 0.01 and solve for x, but I'm still adding that x to this. Okay, uh, and so what ends up happening is you are going to have a slightly higher pH, but it's going to be very, very slight. So what answer you choose to put down that, on that is meaningless to me. Uh, I would put down that, that it is going to be higher, um, just based on the simplicity of the fact that you're adding something to it. Uh, and we don't really have to go into any extreme detail to kind of explain that. So, so for me, this is very, very slightly higher. It probably should have either said, you know, is it going to be higher or lower, and not given that third option, or, or really it should accept either answer then, because, because the difference here is quite small. Um, the pH of this particular one is 12, and when I calculated this, this ended up being a pH of about 12.0009. Okay, so is that larger? Yeah. Well, in terms of sig figs, well, no. So, so either of those answers I think is okay in that particular case, either that it's slightly, slightly higher, negligibly higher, or that it's the same. Okay? In part two, it then says, well, what's the, what's the pH of that thing? Okay. So, so what's the pH of beaker B? And the pH of that, really simply, is going to be found from the pOH is the negative log of your hydroxide concentration. Uh, and this is 0.01. So my pOH is the negative log of 0.01. 10 to the minus 2, negative log of that is 2. So my pH is then going to be 14 minus that 2, which will be 12. Okay. So I'm dealing with a pH 12 in one beaker, 12.09 in the other one. Uh, and then we're going to move on from there. In part 3 it says, you add enough nitric acid to neutralize every, um, to neutralize one, but not both, of the of the things in, in container A. And which one will it react with? Okay, and then it says we'll react with you know the NaOH, the ammonia, or both. Um, my answer to this one was the NaOH. Now I understand that that the in the logistics and kinetics of working this out, that you're going to have the ammonia reacting with that. H plus. However, when you do, any ammonium that you form, as long as you have hydroxide present with that ammonium, you're probably going to see that H plus get transferred over to form ammonia and water. Okay. Now, in addition to that, there is also going to be an equilibrium set up at the end where you do exist a tiny amount of, of NH4 plus regardless of um, of you know the fact that the, the one thing has been neutralized. Um, so probably the best answer in this case is is that it reacts with both. 
However, I want to emphasize the fact that, that what's happening here is that the hydroxide ion is a much, much stronger base. And kind of what that means. What that means is, is that its job is to take an H+. So when it's a strong base, it's able to form a really strong bond between an H+, and itself. And that having those electrons and that, and that big charge density on such a small area really makes it go seeking out to the H+. Now ammonia, on the other hand, is polar. It's a, it's a weak base. It's, it's not going to be as good at locking onto an H+. And I don't think we, we, we really explore that very well in AP chemistry. The ammonium ion here okay, is a weak acid. And what that means is, is that a bond to the H+, is actually quite strong. And so it's difficult to remove that H+. It's not very good at doing its job of an acid is getting rid of that H+. Whereas, whereas something like HNO3, that bond between the H+, and the nitrate is extremely weak. And so it's really easy to get rid of that and, and give that to something else. And so, so what I'm trying to highlight here is the fact that we have a strong base and a weak base, that the implication here is that the strong base is going to be significantly better at taking away the H pluses than the ammonia. Now, again, we're looking at a negligible quantity of something. Do we count that as being the same? And that's why the question is poor. But I'm doing this mostly for educational purposes, and so I'm okay with having that poor question. I want to explore that a little bit. Uh, again, whatever answer you put, I think, would be fine between those two. But more importantly is that you kind of get an understanding of that. All right. So, from there, we get back into your typical weak base chemistry. So in part B, it says write out the equation for the reaction between ammonia and water. Which we've done previously, but really quickly, you have a base and water. The base is going to take an H+, making its conjugate acid, and leaving us with the hydroxide ion. Okay. Then in part 2, it says what's the pH of this 0.01 molar solution? Okay. So I have 0.01 to begin. I don't care about my water. It's a liquid. I have none of this, and I have none of this. Okay. I lose x, I gain x, I gain x. So at equilibrium, now I'm going to ignore this minus x, I'm going to say it's 0.01, and I have x, and I have x. And so, and so my Kb expression here is set equal to x squared over 0.01. And I can solve for x, and it ends up being 0.000424. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Now, what is that? What is this X? You know, well, this is the hydroxide ion concentration, the ammonium concentration. Uh, and the hydroxide in particular is, is really relevant to me finding the pH. Because if I now take that negative log of X, that's the negative log of the hydroxide concentration, that gives me my pOH. Uh, in this particular case, that comes out to be 3.37. And if I then subtract that from 14, that gives me my pH. So my pH here is going to be 10.63, which is my answer to B2. Um, now, a lot of people will, will kind of fall into some traps in these problems and that they, they kind of get used to a system. Oh, okay, it's x squared over the concentration, and I take the negative logarithm of x. That's fine. Um, but the big trap you want to watch for then is that if you have a basic solution, that that's going to give you a pOH. Okay? And you want to ask yourself, does my answer make sense? My pH is 10.63, that makes sense for a weak base. If I had a pH of 3, that's not looking so good. Okay, so in part C we get into a little bit of buffer chemistry. Uh, what we do is we take enough H plus to react with my weak acid that I end up making the same amount of HA as I have excess of the A minus. If I had a half mole of this and a mole of this, okay? Let's just use those numbers hypothetically here because they kind of match up with our data a little bit. What's going to happen is, is half of this, half a mole of this and half a mole of this will react, and I'll make 0.5 moles of that from those two combining. But I'll also have 0.5 of this excess. Okay. Now what's key about this is that when I go to plug this in into the henderson hasselbeck equation, if I have equal amounts of moles of A minus and HA, in the same container, I have equal concentrations, this over this is 1. So if those two things being the same, the logarithm of 1 is 0, my pH must be equal to my pK. Okay? And in this particular case, that's equal to 14 minus my pKb. Okay? So we have 14 minus 4.74. So my pH is going to be equal to 9.26. So for this particular buffer, that's what my pH would be. Okay? And that's a, that's a logical... You know, pH, I have a, a very weak acid when you look at the conjugate acid. 
Uh, and then part C2, it gets into, well, what if you kind of screw up here? What if you mess up? So what if you accidentally mix some water in with it? And there's two ways that could happen. You could, you could measure out you know, your, your volume of the one, and you have half the volume of the other. And then once you've measured it, you could add the water. Or, before you measure. So if we go after, this is an important lesson. You're basically adding water to this. So you're diluting this and you're diluting that, but you're diluting them both the same. So if the water got mixed in afterwards, there would be no change in your pH. So diluting a buffer keeps the buffers, not concentration is constant, but the pH is constant. Uh, and that's up to a point. Eventually your, your small amounts of, of H plus and OH minus would, would lead to where the math doesn't really work on you ignoring excess. And that would start to change at a really small level. But, but for the most part, if you have a healthy amount of buffer and you add a little water to it, there'll be zero change in the pH, which is interesting. Okay? But let's say you kind of messed up before you did this. So if you messed up before and added extra water, and then you measured out half the volume, really what you're doing is you're adding too little acid. Maybe too little is a poor choice of words, but you're adding less than what you expect. Okay, so if you're adding less acid than what you expect, what that means is, is your A- minus concentration is going to end up being bigger than HA. Because you've added less strong acid, you're going to end up with a smaller amount of this, and more of this in excess. So if we look at that, if you have this bigger than this, you get a ratio bigger than 1, that's going to give you a positive answer for this, and your pH is going to be bigger than 9.26. The alternative way to think about that is, well, you have more base, so you should have a more basic pH, which we do. Okay, it's above that level of the pK. Okay, so if you have any questions, please post. I'll do my best to answer them.